So now let's make a couple of extensions to our calculator class. Now, just as before, we're going to keep the same calculator error that we had before. But now we're going to make a couple of changes. First of all, we're going to allow custom operators to be defined from a file. We'll read that file in and then figure out how we can convert um, essentially what's in the file into some type of operand that's supported by the user. And um, to do that, we're going to extend our operations list. And specifically, we're going to define just one custom class, a very, very simple class, which is an operator class. And all it has is an initialization function where I give it the function that I want it to call, and I tell it how many arguments that that function is going to take. Now, what that allows us to do is access these properties to get access to each of the operators. And essentially, we're going to come up with an abstract data type um, that uh, an array that uses uh, these abstract objects, these, these class operators, um, inside of our operations list. So, um, you know, before where we had defined all of these and we had just actually given the function right here, what we're actually going to do now is we're going to define a bunch of uh, of these classes. Each of these classes are going to be new entries in our operations dictionary here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define, okay, well, this is an operator. The function is add. And if I don't tell it the number of arguments that are there, it defaults to two arguments. So um, all of the basic operations are going to be added in. But now I'm also going to add in this absolute value operation right here, which has a number of arguments equal to one. Okay. So this now, this operator list, um, I'm going to be able to use that when I'm evaluating things that come in on my calculator to see, okay, well, how many arguments do I actually need to pop from the stack and use? So we'll come back to this add custom operations in just a moment, but let's see how we actually use the operators in practice. Because what we have now is a dictionary of operator class objects. So let's see how we can use those. So <clears throat> Everything in our add to queue basically stays the same. We're checking to see if we have an operation, and if we do, we pop off that operation and we save it in this result. But now what we're going to do is we're going to see how many arguments we need for that operator. So what we do is we go into our self.operations list at the result. So we grab that uh, operator class instance out of the dictionary, and we just access the property num arguments with the dot notation. So we go in here and we say, okay, let me get the class. And then let me go in and let me get the number of arguments that are used for that operator. So we grab the number of arguments. We check to see whether we have that number of arguments on our queue. If we don't, we throw our calculator error with not enough values. And then we go through and we grab the number of arguments that we need. So in this case, what we'll do is we will create an empty arguments vector. And we'll basically say for i in the range of number of arguments, so for i going from zero to however many arguments there are, we're going to append arguments from the evaluation queue. We're just going to pop off the arguments that are there and append them to this args list. Now we can use our perform operation exactly as we did before. We simply give it the uh, operation that we want to perform and the arguments that are there, except instead of sending in a tuple of v1 and v2, we send in a list of the arguments. Okay, so we also have to slightly change how perform operation works to also work with the new class structure that we have as part of our operations list. So <clears throat> what we'll do here is uh, if we have a valid operation, we'll go in and we will grab that operator class instance out of the dictionary and we will just call dot function right here which acts as okay so use the function that is part of that operator class and since we don't know how many values this list has we don't know how many input arguments this um, this function will have we can actually just say, okay, put a star in front of it, and it's essentially like dereferencing that list such that each element inside the list becomes a uh, entry into the function, a separate entry into the function. So this is very compact notation for, I'm not exactly sure um, how many arguments are in this list, but pass them into this function, each of them as separate arguments. Very concise, very intuitive Python syntax that we can use for that. So, um, Let's run this really quickly and just check to see if that num arguments is actually working. So I'll run this here. 
um, and don't pay attention to the sine and cosine at the end. Those are custom functions which I'll talk to you about when we add it. But essentially, let's check. Let's see if we have uh, negative 3, we add it to the list. Now, if we do plus, it's going to give us not enough values to perform that error. But if we say, oh, we want to do absolute value, it'll do it just fine. And it's able to take that 3 and put it on there. Great. Um, so let me go ahead and quit out of this. Um, and now let's go up here and see how we use the with statement and how we can use some built-in custom uh, Python uh, function additions such that we can add very custom operations that are just read in a file. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to read in a file that is of JSON format. And uh, if you want to know what the JSON format looks like, here's what our operators.json file looks like. Um, it's essentially, uh, it looks very, very much like a dictionary. Um, and most programming languages will be able to um, take a JSON serialization and read it in and convert it into some type of dictionary object. So it looks very much like a dictionary where we have a key and a value pair, each separated by a colon. Right? So if I have, so the name of this, the key would be cosine, and the function that I'm going to want to call, the name of that function is cosine. It's a string, but it's the name of the function is cosine. And if I type sine, here's the key, and here's the value. Right? So that's what this uh, file looks like. So in Python, what we can do here is we can say import JSON. Batteries included, it's a JSON deserialization protocol. So uh, what I'll do here is I will use the with statement to open the file name, and then I'm going to read the file right here. I'll read all of the contents and it'll return it as a string. I'll take that string and put it into this json.loads, load string. And what that does is it takes the string, converts it into a Python dictionary object, and returns the object into data. So data is now a Python dictionary where the key is cosine and the value uh, is this string cos. And then the key is sign, and the value is this key sign. That's stored inside data. Well, now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, well those, those values, cos and sign, that I have right there, let's actually check to see if those are valid functions. And if they are, I want to add those functions to my operations list. So the way that we do that is I'm going to iterate through all of the items that are in this dictionary. So if I say data.items, that gives me the key and it gets me the module that I want to test to see if it exists. So what I can do is I can import math, which has all of the um, objects that I essentially want to do. And what I will do here is um, I'll go through and say, does the math module have a module named cos or named sign or whatever it is that the user has entered into that file? And if it does, I'm going to, okay, well, add that into my operations list at the key and I'm going to use my operator class to wrap and just to wrap the function exactly as I did before, where I say, okay, get the attribute from the math named module. So go grab the function that's inside the math module and return that function to me basically exactly as I would with a function pointer, exactly as we did before. And I'm only going to support things that have number of arguments equal to one right here. So um, I'm only supporting things like sine, cosine, tangent, those types of things. And now that's it. I've automatically added that into the module as long as they gave me, um, as long as the user entered something that was a valid module right here. Um, I'm going to add it into my operations list dictionary. Okay, so um, let's see if that actually works. We'll, uh, we'll take this and run this line of code. Great, so now if I enter like 32, I should be able to say sign right here and it actually go in and take the sign of that and it works beautifully, just like that, good to go, right? And you'll notice this is, this is a really extensible way of adding methods in. So if I go down here to my operators list and I say, okay, well, I also want to support um, tan as the key and tan is also the function that I have right here. Well, if I, I save this and then rerun this, well, now tan is a supported operator. For my calculator. So I could enter uh, 56 right here and take the tan of it and it's there. Boom. Negative 0.61. So let's do one final thing here. So we've done everything. We've used the with statement. We're able to actually have a really extensible and scalable calculator at this point. But um, let's do one little bonus topic here um, and make our code just a little bit more Pythonic. So we're going to redefine custom calculator 
And the only thing that we're going to change is one single function inside of our calculator. So let me scroll back up to where we defined our calculator before and explain why we're doing this. So there was one function that we've been using since the beginning, um, is float. Is float is really just a utility function, right? It's all it needs to know is, hey, this value right here, I'm going to test to see whether that value is a float. If I can convert it to a float, you know, from a string to a float. Um, and if I can, I'll return true. Otherwise, I'll return false. And, you know, essentially, there's no reason to pass in self to this function. It really shouldn't be defined as a class function. It's a utility function. Um, and so uh, this right here is not very a Pythonic definition for a class method. Right? So what I can do here is I can define that method as a static method and say, yes, I'm using it, it's part of the class, but I really have no reason to access self inside of that function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add something called a Python decorator. And uh, Python decorators, they're denoted by an at symbol and then some type of keyword that happens after the at symbol. And what that tells Python to do is the function that immediately follows this um, this decorator syntax. What I want to do with that is um, I want to wrap it. I want to change the functionality of this function somehow, either with the input or with the output of what the function does. So in this case, the at static method decorator um, it eliminates the uh, requirement that I pass in self. It's basically saying, yeah, this is a method. It's associated with the class, but there's really no reason to pass in self. To this method, um, I'm just going to pass in the value right here. And um, then when I call it, I still call self.isFloat, but there's no reason to define this um, as having self. And that makes this just a little bit more explicit, just a little bit more intuitive. It's basically telling people, this is a utility function. There's no reason that I have it in the class other than just to organize that function there. And so that's the only thing that I've changed in this block of code. I can run this. I can say 45, enter, 3, enter, plus. Everything works exactly the same. Um, the only reason that um, I've changed this is just to make this just a little bit more readable, just a little bit more intuitive. Now, if you want to, I think what you should do is some possible extensions. If you really want to go in here um, and test your knowledge on these Python subjects, um, some of the things that you could do are um, extend some of the error checking that we're doing. So add a check for the number of operators that we have for a given function, um, rather than manually um, entering the number of operators that we have for a, um, sorry, the, the number of values that we can input into a given function. So instead of reading from a file and saying this is sine or cosine or tangent, and just assuming that it has one argument, write some code to figure out, well, how many arguments does that function have? Um, and then use that as input into the num argument. So we can really make this a very scalable process. The user just has to enter the name of the function that they want for the calculator to use. Um, you could add some exception handling for if the user has you know, entered some bad uh, JSON. So if we go in here to this file and we incorrectly enter something that is um, not a valid JSON format or not supported, we could actually raise some type of calculator error that makes sense. Um, and then finally, <clears throat> You might add um, support for arbitrary functions and arbitrary modules. So in this, what we had done is we had said, oh, we want to use the math module. But maybe you could extend this to be able to, oh, well, we're going to use a function that's in any module. And the user just has to tell us, well, what module are we using? right? And what functions from that module do you want to use inside the calculator? So these are all things that will really kind of expand and test your knowledge of Python and take you into some new uh, functions that are part of Python uh, that you wouldn't otherwise see uh, unless you actually really tried to code some of this up by yourself.